Hi, this is Justice. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make a leaf brush and then I'll do another video on how to make a grass brush. Uh, if you figure out one, you may be able to figure out the other without any problems whatsoever. Um, here you can see I use this grass brush here and let me show you what the leaf brush looks like. All right, so we're going to select a layer here and our leaf brush right here is very nice. And this one is a watercolor, which means it's going to diffuse and it's not going to diffuse too much. And I give us some nice uh, darkened edges. Uh, and I like this. I think this is really pretty. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up. Now, I have already copied from Google an image of a maple leaf. So we're going to go back here and we're going to paste it. All right, so we can see our maple leaf here and uh, I'm going to click OK. And here we're going to clear this layer again, just the background. So you can just hand draw in your leaf or whatever it is you're doing. We're going to go to the selection tool, magic wand, and we're going to remove the background here. Again, this can be done a number of different ways. All right, we're going to hit Control D and do this again. Okay, there we go. We're going to click Delete, and then we're going to lasso select this. So rectangle right here. And then when we go in, we're going to make our brush. We're going to start with a watercolor, and we're going to start with the gouache right here, this brush. So I'm going to select this, and we're going to choose um, Copy Brush Preset. Go up here, tap on My Brushes, or Create a group if you don't have one yet and paste. Okay, so we have this up here now. Open the brush creator, tap on shape, and we're going to import our selection. Now I did this just a little bit ago, so we're going to go ahead and uh, actually we'll leave that. Okay, so now we have a shape here and we're going to deselect and let's take a look here. And what we see is a brush not a leaf brush. Okay, so let's undo that. What we need to change first is spacing. Now spacing, this is this entire box right here. So this is going to be the blank space to the left and the blank space to the right of the shape. So this set at 100 means those boxes are going to be right next to each other. You can see that up here. This is too little. Let's make it bigger. All right, because you, you can see that box. Now we don't want any um, grain here because we want this to be uh, as solid as possible. So we're going to select white, which means everything will pass through. And let's look at that again. That's looking better. Now this is not very organic. It's very mechanical. So we're going to do a couple other things. We're going to turn on tilt. Locking will keep this uh, from doing something different if you have a setting set in the background. So now when we do this, you can see we've got tilt applied, which is great. Now 100, this is good for demonstration purposes for a brush like this, around 60, I think is better, but this is too close. So we need to add some jitter. So we're gonna do a little bit of size jitter here. Uh, and we don't want to be able to go from tiny to huge, which means up here, we need to reset this and drop this down. I say around 40 is pretty good, but take a peek you want it to be around the same size as you would see on a tree. We also don't want opacity to have this much influence. So we're going to allow opacity to have a little bit of influence. So we're going to get a little bit of opaque. And because this is a watercolor brush, this is going to diffuse out anyway into a more solid color, less of an opaque looking one. And leaves are generally uh, somewhat transparent. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's play a little bit with angle jitter, spacing jitter, a little bit of scatter, and uh, this is going to be pretty good. So we don't have to do too much else here. Uh, I will point out we have uh, a pretty nice looking brush here. Let's clear this layer. Uh, what I'll do is I will turn on mixed colors. So then if I pick over here, what's going to happen is this is going to uh, move towards 
the other color is not going to tr transition all the way. So we get a nice uh, gradient in between these different ones. This is very pretty. I like this a lot. Uh, I also put edge darkening really high because I like this and in my watercolor. I think that's pretty. And one of the most important aspects is water level is set to four. If we set this really high, then this is going to diffuse out into mush. And we're going to have uh, some weird things going on. So keeping this down, I like this around four, three or four. Uh, if you're doing uh, a lot here and you're getting uh, some mush, it can be because of the stacking of the water. So just go right over here and click on dry the layer. So then when you go back over it, it should, it should be um, not wet anymore and you'll get some more of that uh, leaf coming through. Okay, so now there's another step that we can do here and that is to duplicate this. We can then flip horizontally so we have a little bit more variation there. So we go back and forth. Now, if you do this, because you can do up to four different patterns here, and if you do that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna create an image sequence down here. So we have the set to pen pressure, and in this black spot in between the uh, image one and image two, this is where it transitions between those. So if I put this really wide, what we're gonna see is in between light pressure, we start getting double images and blending. Now, because this image is almost the same thing, it's gonna be hard to see. So let's go ahead, we're gonna grab this one. And what you see is a mix where you have both images in the same spot. So we want these here to be touching. And then that'll just jump from one to the next when we go through. All right, let's go ahead and delete that. Um, this is most of what you want to keep in mind. I, I like glaze turned on as well. I think it does a better job of building up colors when glaze is turned on. If you want these brush presets that I have here, I will put a link on my website, tabletpro.com slash rebel. Just download the zip and drag them directly on top of rebel five and it will import them. And the next time you start rebel, it will be over here in your presets. If you have questions about this, put it in the comment section and I will look forward to reading those and responding and making more tutorials on the brush creator and how to create different brushes. All right, grass brush coming up soon.